Hey, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we're the Rambling Reviewers. How and we're doing? here to talk about Neon Genesis Evangelion, which is one of the coolest titles I've ever heard. As much as I have problems with the series, I have to admit that is a pretty cool title. Matt, but I have to think that it's eclipsed by something else even more awesome. Mm -hmm. Tengen Topa Golden Lagan! Yep, yep. Aw, oh, man. Which I fart. It's a superior anime series <laughs> in, like, every way. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I mean, so... so These two shows take on uh, big, you know, giant robots from completely opposite angles, and they're both awesome. Um, you know, Ava from the much darker side, and... Uh, Gurren Lagan from okay darkness happens but it's all about punching through your despair and being awesome like Indeed. the power of awesomeness is an actual thing in this show it's called spiral power it essentially means the power of awesome <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I love that but, but, we're, oh, not, yeah. but we're not talking about it. so so Ava um, is about uh, subverting so many of the giant robot tropes and I find it brilliant for doing that. Super awesome spoilers for Ava, by the way. Oh, come on. We should just post a video at the beginning of this saying, hey, if you're watching videos from our channel, there's going to be spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Because um, there will be. So so one of the, the huge uh, things that which draws so much attention is the way our main character, Shinji Ikari, acts when he's in the cockpit. Because he's not having fun. <laughs> he is freaking the hell out he is screaming and crying and he's generally just a mess of a person you know uh and a lot of people complain that shinji is, is too whiny and they don't like this show he whines all the time he does <laughs> now to, to, okay to, I, will to my, give, yeah. I will give you this he has a point i would be acting much the same if right. i was jumped into the cockpit get me out of here all right so a it's about realism because freaking a 14 year old child is suddenly tasked with fighting a crazy monster that no one has ever seen before and if he fails the entire world will die that is a stressful situation you know this is reality ensues on a massive scale uh well it all depends it's a stressful situation <laughs> no i'm not debating that you okay. said reality ensues. okay no no but it, it, as far as debating. that one theme is goes not reality in a bunch of other ways is that what you're saying uh, in that one very minor circumstance, yes. Reality doesn't ensue in a lot of other ways. No, though. okay. But but that the idea, though, is to take, you know, because kids play around like, I now I'm using a giant robot, you know, and it's all cool and fun. In real life, that would be freaking scary because war is freaking scary. And this is just war in a much bigger way, you know. And it's not, you don't even have a whole squad with you, you know. It's basically you, maybe like two other people, you know, that also have Avas. Uh, and he's 14 years old. It's, it's, he's a child soldier, you know? Mm -hmm. He's been pressed into service with good reason. They have to save the world, but it's freaking hell. Now, to my estimation, saying that Shinji is too whiny is a lot like saying that Freddy Krueger is too scary. Okay? He's supposed to be scary. Like, the whole plot revolves around him being scary, right? Okay, yeah. But... Now, yeah, uh, just uh, let me finish it, though. Is So, you know, and if you don't like horror movies... You know, because they're too scary. Oh, that's understandable. That's not your genre. That's not your thing. I get that. Uh, in Shinji's case, he's, I wouldn't say whiny, he suffers. He suffers in a really realistic way. And if you think he's suffering too much and screaming too much, well, that was the point of the show. And if you don't like that, I understand. That's not your type of show. But for me, that was gold. I felt so much empathy for this kid. I still do. And, and, you know, part of that's because I had my own struggles in high school. Thankfully, I didn't have to go, you know, murder a bunch of aliens who were trying to destroy the world. Are you kidding? That would have <laughs> taken my mind off of my problems. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but, but to and, and see... And honestly, let's, let's, be, let's be fair here. That would have taken your mind off of your problems. It would have given me more problems. But to, to see um, this issue of feeling so freaked out and, or, or so misunderstood so alone, because it's not just when he's in the cockpit. It's also his dad doesn't, you know, he's distant from him. It's... All this emotional trauma from one source or another. I haven't had the same experiences, but I looked at that and I said, I understand this idea, and I sympathize so much. And the whole series revolves around this kid who suffers, and he's trying to do the right thing, and he has all this pain in the meantime. And it's, it's, just a, it's, it's a tragedy, sort of. It's an action tragedy. Watch this child suffer. Isn't that sad, you know? 
And oh, it's hilarious. No, it's, it's so sad to me. And and I am one of the few people, by the way, who absolutely loves the original ending. You know, it sort of ends the episode twenty five or four. Uh, isn't that the one where everyone starts clapping and, and says, says congratulations. congratulations? I loved that. Oh my gosh, it was this amazing subversion of what you thought was going to happen because they they skipped all the external bits. They went straight into his heart and talked about his own psychic problems, which is the core of his problem, really. Uh, you mean you know, psyche problems? Psyche or, problem, or, whatever. Or, yeah, yeah. His emotional issues. problems. Uh, yeah, um, psychic and he, problems. That's like a, I can't bend this spoon <laughs> with my mind. <laughs> Although, Shinji would have been much improved, in my opinion, <laughs> if that had been his entire <laughs> character. That he was like a, if he believed he was a psychic, but no one would believe him. <laughs> no, Ritsuko, you may not increase the LCL level until I pass out, because I will crush you with my mind powers. Put it in a fanfic, but... It delves straight into his psychological issues, and at the very end, he finally has this epiphany and says, my life is worth living. And this is the kid who has suffered so much, and the director of this, by the way, had been suicidal previously, and a lot of it was based on his own experiences. And here he is coming out and saying, my life is worth living. And I thought, that is brilliant, and I love it, and I don't even care whatever happened to the rest of the Avas and stuff, because this is what I cared about. Then they came up with End of Evangelion, the movie, which was frankly confusing, and I sort of liked it, but I was also like, I don't really know what's going on anymore, guys. I'm sorry. I haven't even seen that. I, it is it is weird. Um, uh, all I know is apparently um, Sele or Seal... Sele. Or, well, Sele decides to um, commence the Human Instrumentality Project, which turns everyone into Tang. <laughs> yeah. And then Shinji fights Rei, who's as big as the moon. Yeah. And um, then he goes more insane. Yeah. And then uh, he and Asuka wake up on a beach of blood, and he yeah. starts to strangle her. Yeah, I didn't understand that, really. <laughs> I went and just, you know what? I have, I have so much love for this series. I just went, I do not know what you're doing here, guys. I'm sorry. Which is, oddly enough, the feeling I had for Equestrian Girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's another of the movies coming out, the rebuild. They have one and two, and three came out in Japan. It's going to be translated, and we'll see it sometime. Mm hmm. Um, if the idea of Rebuild was to make Ava more understandable, uh, they failed. <laughs> it's still a cool show, but, you know, frankly, yeah, a lot of stuff is not going explained. And uh, part of what I like to do in fixing it is to get stuff explained and tie in all these threads. Ava has this great sense of these huge plots going on, you know, epic thing. Where the frick did the angels even come from? Why are they here? Why are they attacking Lilith? Why... And some of it is like all there in the manual, to use the trope name. Yeah. There was actually a little booklet they passed out at one of their theater screenings of one of the movies or something, and, and it like explains several things. I think if you need to revert things. to all there in the manual, you've really kind of failed as a writer. Right, right. So wouldn't it be cool if all this stuff added up in a way? So I have this epic plan of how I would add it up, uh, and I can tell you that. But I don't know if you want to say something first, because yeah, I'll okay. start rambling. Um, a few things that I would have loved to have seen in the series. Yeah. Uh, first off... I'd have liked to see some XCOM stuff in here. <laughs> okay, uh, for those... Okay, I've explained XCOM before, but... Yeah. Um, or at least... They deal with aliens. They're, they're the extraterrestrial combat unit. Yep. I, I'm not saying I would have liked to see XCOM fighting the angels. I would. <laughs> but what I would like to see is them dissecting... See, like, scientists picking over the remains of the angels to find uh -huh. useful traits that they could use. Uh -huh. um, they did try that Them once. coming up with new and more advanced weapons. So, like, um, like by the time the eighth angel comes around, okay, Shinji, we, um, based on our understanding of, like, the other angel... Uh -huh. pulls, um, okay, we've gained access to a subspace pocket that allows you to store massive amounts of weapons inside. We've also created this power armor for the Ava, yeah. uh, rocket boosters, and your battery life is now about half an hour long instead right. of like five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, you have this. Remember that positron cannon we used back in episode like two? It was like five, but whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Episode five? Yeah, that's standard issue now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, pretty cool. Uh, two, I would have liked to see more international cooperation on it. Not just, um... Um, well, yeah, they did have... The one Ava was made in America, and then it got eaten up by a... They, was that made... Whatever. One of them was made in America, eaten up. Another one was blown up, and it's original testing site. You know, cause something went wrong. It was sabotaged, I think. Uh, yeah. Like, I, there is... There's a thing that I'm not really fond of. Yeah. It's one nation saves the world. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. this is usually 
America saves the world or Japan saves the world. Depending on who makes the movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, and the Japanese, it, it's pretty noticeable when they do it. Like, um, uh, the Japanese are the only ones who built this spaceship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bullshit. You, you got like one... 136th of the landmass of the Earth, and you're not allowed to build anything, build weapons, or have a standing army due to the Treaty of MacArthur. I mean, yeah. The treaty that General MacArthur wrote Dude, out. Uh, it's in their constitution, I think, is the main thing. Yeah. So, no, you're not building the super-dimensional fortresses. <laughs> uh, um, and America can't save the world all the time because, well, quite frankly... Because well, actually, someone else makes movies. <laughs> well, America can't... I mean, America is always saving the world because, well, that's what Americans want. Yeah. But I like multinational things. Yeah. Look at Pacific Rim. That was... That was very much, multinational. Uh, yeah, I mean... No, Oscar's German. Let's give her credit there. Yeah, Oscar's German. But, like, it's also mentioned, like, she's half Japanese. And, oh, yeah. I suppose and, she is. And, and, like, Ray is... Freaking clone thing. Well, but she's from Japan, so yeah. I'm, I'm counting that as Japanese. Yeah, right. Like, everyone's Japanese, and all the best stuff is Japanese, and... Uh, yeah. Um, but, okay, so more multinationality. I'd have liked to see Ritsuko be uh, Australian. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Uh, Ritsuko be Australian. Misato could be, like, Brazilian. Right. Um, I could see that. Uh, like, you'd see, I mean, this you hear people saying, oh, yeah, the United Nations is going to cut our funding. Well, then show that this is a United Nations project to save the world from the angels. Mm -hmm. see, I want to see, like, um, uh, uh, large flags waving outside of the headquarters. I want to see... Um, like many nations working yeah. together. Okay, uh, so X Comet up. So that's multinational and uh, weapon upgrades. And the the beginning bit with uh, Shinji. You remember you were saying that you wanted all Shinji should have combat training. You should say you were saying. Well, yeah. I mean, if he's the third child. Yeah. And they've known this for years. Yeah. Upon years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, probably they've known since he was four. They should have prepared him at least slightly. Right. They don't even have to tell him about the angels. Just uh, put him through. If his dad wants to make him miserable, make him like full of self-doubt and full of uh, I feel like crap, yeah. put him through boot camp. <laughs> yeah. That would toughen him up, better enable the human race right. to survive the angels. Right. Um, and it wouldn't... And it would, uh, well... Do the two things you just said. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, two, um, more conventional weapons having a better effect on the a angels. And yes, I know that's the point of using the Avas. Yeah. Uh, that they have the AT fields. And, yeah. Uh, oh, no, nothing can penetrate them except the AT fields. Except that we see that conventional weapons can affect them in multiple circumstances. Remember the angel that they had to use the dance battle to finish? Yeah. Which, that was really stupid, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen so many people point out so many ways that they could have solved that battle and made it not stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, they were like, okay, well, after you guys got your asses handed to you, yeah. um, we bombed the hell out of it with N2 mines. Yeah. Which they say, oh, N2, non-nuclear. Well, fuck you guys. The, the Japanese my... have a thing against nuclear. Well, yeah, yes, go ahead, go I ahead. I get it, yeah, but, yeah. you know, if you're going down, you don't w spare the non-nuclear. I'm bringing out the Sarbombas <laughs> <laughs> and blowing the hell out of the angels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, the angel was disabled by multiple N2 strikes. Well, people have pointed out, wait, if it was disabled and they're stationary for several days, one, uh, keep hitting it with N2s <laughs> until it ceases to exist. Yeah. Two, if it's stationary and two of your Avas are disabled, have Ray go out with two progressive knives <laughs> and stab them while they're motionless. Right, I didn't even think of that. You're right. Um, You're right. Uh, three, uh, you have that positron cannon. Yeah, it turns out all the power in the entire world when it's fired, but I'd prefer all <laughs> some kid to be without the, his Xbox Live for five minutes yeah. rather than everyone be dead. I mean, that would that would make sense. That should just be a permanent installation on that mountain. And Actually, oh, that's my next point. Yeah. <laughs> Permanently installed positronic cannons. Yeah. <laughs> they work. Yeah, that was clearly it was invented as a one episode thing, which led to the neat deal of you had to shoot Ray through the back or through, shoot Ray through the back. But yeah, when oh, you he think had to shoot her through the back? Yeah, no, the the thing he shoots, he misses. The thing shoots back at him. The angel shoots, and Ray steps in with a freaking space shuttle and uses that as a heat shield. And then he has to shoot through the back of her angel and the heat shield on its way. The Ava. Yeah, on the Ava and the heat shield on its way to the angel. Okay, well, okay, which was a neat thing, but you're right. Once you consider the broader implications, it's like, why don't we do that all the time? Yeah, I mean, oh no, it's the eighth angel. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess. Here comes the ninth angel. <laughs> I mean, you this could... is remarkably easy. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't kill the virus angel that way. Which I love the variety of those angels, okay, by the way. That I, was so cool. I admit, I read the manga. Oh, you haven't seen the whole show? No, I haven't. Oh, the manga's different. Yeah, yeah, the manga cuts out a bunch of angels. Like the big orb in the sky that was actually a shadow. Oh, the shadow sh- thing. That was cool. Yeah, that I was not in the manga. Okay, was the virus in the manga, the one that took no. over the computers. That was interesting, because it's like, there's an angel. Wait, where is, it, is there? Where is the... And it's just like billions of tiny particles that came in through like the water supply, and they're going into the computers. They're just crawling in <laughs> and like freaking up the Magi and going to turn on a self-destruct. <laughs> and you were like, oh, the frick do we do? We can't oh, stomp yeah. on it, you know? Oh, I yeah, love, we uh, can, but, you know, it would we, we would, Yeah, kind of well we'd screw us. ourselves over. Um, okay, so permanent positron cannon emplacement. Yeah. More conventional weapons. Yeah. Uh, upgrades to your things. Uh, Shinji would actually be um, trained. Uh, trained. Uh, here's another thing. Hmm. Uh, we take this realism thing to another step. We give them therapy. Why yeah. is no one given therapy in this? That if is... someone has PTSD, you give them therapy. You that teach them how to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, the the various cast of, all the. I have heard people say, and I am not kidding. They think the Avas run on traumatized on, <laughs> Tra- on, tra- trauma. on trauma, on trauma. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think they're that far off. Uh, Asuka is so mentally broken in so many ways. Right. She makes Shinji look are. like a ball of normalcy. Well, not really. Uh, but she is broken in many ways. Yeah. Uh, Ray has no. Um, Ray makes Ray is Vulcan. broken in her own way. Yeah. Ray. Uh, is basically what would happen if you shoved a child into a closet for six years and never let him out. Yeah. Um, and Shinji, well, he has his own emotional problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give them all counseling and therapy. This is partially a Japanese thing, is they're very much not on the therapy idea uh, compared to America. How is it that America is viewed as one of the least healthy nations? We have, like, the highest rates of heart cancer and... Uh, we eat like shit. I think you just you... explained yourself. <laughs> what? You said, how are we the least healthy nation? We have heart can We have heart disease. We have no, cancer. No, no, no. America is like the least healthy nation. How is it that we have all these different problems, and yet we're ahead of the Japanese in the field of mental health? Culture is weird, man. Oh, Culture is weird. But, um, okay. Um, uh, give Shinji and the other pilots actual person who would take care of them. Look, Misato is great. I love Misato. Hmm. But the point remains that if my parents did half the shit Misato does, <laughs> yeah. I would get taken away. Wow. Well, uh, okay, I would have. Yeah, I'm yeah. an adult now, but wow. but she, I would have get taken away. Um, okay, no adult should be drinking that much beer. <laughs> um, and Ray, who the fuck give her those living coordinates? She's she's living alone in an apartment that I think looks horrible. Mm. Have you seen my room lately? It's a pit. Yeah. <laughs> and. It's it's unlivable, and she's being forced to live there. Hmm. Give the pilots decent accommodations. I feel like Ray wouldn't even care to get better accommodations because she just doesn't care about stuff. Well, still, just because you don't care about something doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. Yeah, I suppose. Like um, uh, I don't care if you're a Buddhist. You know, you you need money. Just to like yes. pay for your stuff and yep. Uh, Unfortunately, Buddhists do not get everything free. That'd be a great reason to be a Buddhist. That'd be twenty two ninety five. I'm sorry, I'm a Buddhist. Oh well, all right then. Xbox, please. <laughs> <laughs> but we do not mean offense to Buddhists. No, yeah, they're fine. Um, so yeah, they, Hindus though. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. They, um, so okay, they could have so, better taken care of the so, kids. So um, yeah, take very better care of the kids. Um, uh-huh. um. Okay. Next point. I'd like to see more evidence that the world has changed. Uh, well, that's in the new version, the oceans are red. But yeah. Okay, yeah, the oceans are red. Big fucking deal. <laughs> uh, okay, the oceans are red. Ooh, scary. I want to see the, how the people have changed since the second impact. Mm. I want to see entire religious cults. That like, There could be a whole episode about, okay, Shinji gets kidnapped by religious cultists who worship the angels as messengers of God. Just like those people they briefly mentioned in Pacific Rim. Uh, yeah, except I thought of it before. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, give give me some indication that humanity is not just these f- few people who are innately screwed up. Mm. Um, give me some indication that there is a world outside of Tokyo 3. 
Uh, mentioned in pa- passing, oh, um, uh, Mexico City reconstruction is nearly completed. They had a couple things like that, but yeah, you could do more. Um, okay. Uh, the angels, I wouldn't really change that much. They're awesome. <laughs> um, although I would question why there was one that was specifically devoted to mind rape. Because it's evil. Okay, yeah, because it's evil. Yes, that's, that's a thing. What do thing. you mean? I mean, they, they have incredible variety as it is. Why is that one particular variety odd? I don't know. It doesn't seem... I mean, the, the angel's ultimate goal is to get down to Lilith, right? Okay, yeah. So he would have to mind rape everybody and then land, I guess? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> one pile, one down. <laughs> Three billion to go. <laughs> yeah, okay. This seems like the most inefficient angel. Like, okay, here's what should happen. Um, they took care of it by, like, getting Ray down to Terminal Dogma, mm. grabbing the Lance of Longinus, and shucking it at the angel. Now, yeah. here's what should have happened. Hmm... hmm. The angel is holding totally motionless up in orbit. America still has something like 14,000 nuclear ICBMs. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> I just see this huge wall of missiles approaching the angel. Okay, we're done by Dre Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, they should have had a five-year-old child. If any of the plans that the Ava planners came up with could be debunked by the five-year-old child. All those planners were fired. How many times did that happen? Well, okay. The part where they sent them down into a volcano. Hey, you're the one who wanted to play XCOM and grab the angel corpses and stuff. That was the whole point of that. Okay, yeah, but there's a point... And they had upgrades, too. (laughs) Okay, there was a point... uh, There should be a point where between observing the corpses of the angels and diving into (laughs) an active volcano... (laughs) There is, uh, there's room on that scale. Yeah, all right, that's true. Um, okay, but yeah, I'd like to see consistent upgrades. Mm. Heck, you know, give them better bladed weapons. Why did they always have to resort to the knives? Mm. I mean, Here's a sword, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, give me a... Okay, you want to use knives? Okay, keep the knife. Just make it a little longer. Put it on the end of a long rod. You got a naginata. You yeah. got a Japanese feel to that. It's yeah, a that is, that is nice. And it's a spear with a knife. I will go for end. that. I will go for that. Yeah. Um, okay, what else would I change? Um, uh, the whole thing with... Um, okay, I have my own plans for uh, how end it, the ev- Evangelion would end, but I'm going to wait until after he's done. Okay. So what other things would I change? Um, maybe the school could be better. In what way? You know, it's, they're living in a society where they're expected to be attacked by angels at all times. Yep. And all we ever see of Shinji is him sitting around in a classroom, like, listening to the teacher drone on about, like, second impact or multiplication yeah. tables. Yeah. I want to see some disaster preparedness drills. Okay, people, now we're, uh, this is what ha- uh, let's practice triage. Let's practice first aid. Oh. This is the new reality we live in. That would be nice. Any moment, a flying eight-dimensional... <laughs> A monster with 12,000 mouths and right. and sings the song that ends the world could fly overhead. You need to be prepared to, right. to uh, cauterize your best friend's stump that was once their arm. That's I like that. I mean, they did have a bunker, but you could do more on that. I like the okay. idea of first aid training for all the kids. Okay, first aid training, uh, emergency response classes... Uh, teaching the, them where safe locations if the, are. Yeah, if the angel attacks from this direction, go here. If it attacks from that direction, go there. Teaching them survival training. So like, oh, the angel's attacking the city. Go into the woods. Stay there for a week. Right. If uh, Then try to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Here's how to survive in the woods for a week. Mm-hmm. Here's how to scavenge. Mm-hmm. Um, heck, there could be classes in the military. Because this is, a, Tokyo 3 is pretty much founded for nerve. Yeah. Y- you should have like, uh, like big missile emplacements all over the place saying okay kids now in all likelihood your parents will die horribly defending this <laughs> the city so here's what we need you to do here's how you reload the titan missiles into oh, the man. missile That's, launchers what a what a child soldier feel you've got there but it, I mean, it, it, yeah. it goes well with the show i know what you mean, I mean yeah i mean y- you have all these it feels like no one one big problem i have with the series it feels like no one prepared for the angels except for nerve what do you mean no, I mean, not even Nerve. 
They made the Avas. What do you mean? They made the Avas. What else did they do? I'm pretty sure they that did... took all their effort. The, well, the giant god monster robots. Well, oh, okay. I wasn't aware that Nerve was the only people who were capable of doing anything in this new world. No, but that's why some of them were constructed by other countries and then shipped well, in. Well, no, I mean, like, have the... Have, if Nerve can't do it, delegate it to other organizations, like uh, National Angel Attack Preparedness Organization, or... Uh, um, different weapon companies that sell uh, missile upgrades or um, survivalist training groups. Heck, some of them you wouldn't even need companies. You could just form like the Boy Scouts. So just an extension of what you were saying with the kids and the education kind of. Precisely. Mm. I mean, and yet it doesn't feel like Toji was revealed to be the fifth child. Yeah. And yet it's also at the same time kind of implied that they know who all the children are ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So why not have all those children be prepared and be training? Okay, at any moment, you could be called upon to be the savior of the earth. Yeah, yeah. But there's none of that. Everyone just goes about their daily lives, and it feels like they're trying to show a slice of life and how Shinji's suffering in that. Uh Uh-huh. But it's not really reflecting the fact that this is technically a post-apocalyptic world where... Mm. Uh, the Antarctica is gone, uh, and and Cthulhu, monsters that would make Cthulhu shit himself <laughs> are roaming the world, pre- preparing to come to your house, mm. shit on your couch, and say, fuck you, <laughs> asshole. Not a way to put it. Yeah, so... I, it doesn't feel like... It, it doesn't yeah. feel like the atmosphere that really should be present. So, I, I will give <clears throat> some credit to this idea of we go to school and they talk normal stuff and then we go to like karaoke bars and it's normal stuff and everything's normal stuff. If they did a, a better job making a theme out of that, that people are trying to cling to normalcy. And I'll still give you at least half of what you said and there's still these you know, triage classes and there's still these other missile companies and stuff. But there's also a feeling of because the world sucks so bad, we have to intentionally ignore that sometimes and like go pretend like the world is normal. Because otherwise we would all go crazy, type of feeling. Okay. You know? If someone, maybe. if someone pointed that, some some very observant person, maybe say, "This is how society works now. We have to pretend things are normal because every so often they go so horribly abnormal that we have to like put that out of our minds." It becomes a psychological <clears throat> type of a thing. And yes, I still give you there should be a lot of that stuff, but keep the normal with an explicit. It's there for for the purposes of the craziness. It's there because of the craziness. Things he- are so hellish that we have to go play cello now or something and just pretend and everything's okay. You okay, know? I will accept that. I would accept that, but we never got no, any No, I'll, I'll give you. They, they could have done more. Toji's like, hey, asshole, you, ju- you hurt my sister when you took out your giant robot. <laughs> Shinji's response should have been... If I was Shinji, yeah. first off, I would be giving it a corner because I, just had, I was just shoved into... Uh, a machine that tried to drown me in blood liquid yeah. and had to fight a giant robot. I'd be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yep, 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 yep. But, um, okay, my reaction would be, hey, asshole, hey, guess what? Your sister ain't dead. That's thanks to me, <laughs> jackass. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, well, that's not Shinji's personality, per se. Well, that's my personality. I know it is. I know it is. Uh, but I just, I don't know. He's able to say, hey, even though you saved the entire world and all of humanity last night, I'm still pissed at you because one very minor thing happened. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I give Toju credit on that just for being, yeah, he's being irrational. Okay, I could see someone kind of freaking out. The world is ending. Okay, yeah, but, and humans have that annoying tendency to not focus on the big picture when they have something small in right, front of them. Right, right, right. Um, but the big the, when you were talking about earlier was about the big picture, and I like that the whole you know the society is this whole the whole town is a war town you know, it's built for the purpose of war against the angels, um, you know there's a lot of little ways you could show that I would I'm just thinking now like people are dancing in a club or something and we see like some shot where you you can see them dancing and then in the foreground there's like the you know, the emergency evacuation button or something. You know, it's like it's got a plan that shows you to this underground bunker and lots of little details like that. Well, you know, in the background, it's still a war town. Yeah, there could be an anti-air turret like on the corner that you have to walk past every day. Right. Yeah. People just it's like some kids are like playing on it even, you know, and someone's like shooing them off, you know, but this is the world we live in. Like we have these turrets just sitting around. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And and, and heck, the um, how I would end Evangelion. Mm hmm. Okay, um, 
can you tell me what happens at the end of Evangelion? I haven't gotten that far in the manga. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know generally that, like, I'm, uh, we're the final angel and... Well, and no, was... not... I mean, we're, it doesn't actually say that. That's, like, a common fan thing. What yeah. happens is... I forgot the guy's name, but it was, it was so tragic, and I love this so much. But So this new kid shows up, and he's oh, like... Kawaru. Okaru, is that it? I have no idea. Kokoaru. Kokoaru? I have no idea. I've only read the name. Okay, the kid uh, shows Billy up. the kid. This kid shows up, and he's like, you know, a new child, and he's like awesome at piloting Ava's, and he's making friends with Shinji, and then suddenly, um, you know, uses Ava. He can, like, psychically control him. Turns out he's an angel, and he goes down to Terminal Dogma uh, with Shinji following. And Shinji grabs him, like a fleshy part, you know, instead of grabbing the rest of the angel, grabs him and holds him there. And this is, I love this shot. It takes 45 seconds. Shinji just staring at his friend, knowing that he's an angel. Okay, quick question. What? Um, you're making a clenched fist gesture, and you say Shinji follows him down. Is this with Shinji in his in, Ava? In his Ava, I'm sorry. Okay, in that the Ava. makes much more he sense. He grabs the kid... <laughs> Yeah, Kawaru <laughs> is a midget. <laughs> he's a ta- he's a he's a borrower. I found another thing I would change about Ava. Kawaru <laughs> the midget. So he grabs him, dog. and he's a very long hesitation. And then the next you see is a shot of like the the liquid at the bottom of that chamber, and Kawaru's head just drops into it, like he popped his head off. And that is the end of episode twenty four. And the implication being that was I guess the last angel, and we saved the world. And then 25 and 26 is all this sort of acid trip thing, um, and it's all about his inner world and eventually discovering that his life is worth living. That's the end. So basically, we killed the last angel. Uh, done. <laughs> oh. Now, they never really got around to, like, what was instrumentality, and apparently 25 and 26 is instrumentality, but it's very, 25 very... 25 and 26 are acid. Uh, wait. So instrumentality is a massive acid trip. Kind of. Congratulations. We already achieved that. It was called the 60s. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It all makes sense now. <laughs> Sele is made up of hippies. They want to relive the glory days. Oh, no. You know, man, we should make, like, giant biomechanical <laughs> things. Call them, like, Avas or something. Dude. Dude, that... That, that's like brilliant, man. No. Gendo. Gendo, you want to do this? Uh, okay, sure. Good. You're, you're, you're in charge. Just like use the Dead Sea Scrolls here. This is a roll of toilet paper. Follow the scrolls. No, but, no. but this is just a, I said follow them or we'll cut your funding, man. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Anyway. Okay, so um, that's how it ended. How are you going to end it? Okay, um, wow, I kind of... Okay, uh, did the mass production Avas only appear in End of Evangelion? In End of Evangelion, yeah. Okay, they start... Sele starts rolling those things out. Yeah, which is a bit of XCOM for your viewing entertainment. Okay, yeah. He starts rolling out the mass-produced Avas. Yep. Um, and it's revealed that this whole time, the whole thing, was because they provoked this alien. Um... It was pretty vague, but go ahead. You tell me what you know. Uh, uh, shit. You know what? Hang on. Just, you, you tell your <laughs> I'll story. tell my story? Okay. okay I'll, I'll think so, so here's my bit that is intended to wrap up all the metaphysical everything and the past and future of, um, yeah, of Neon Genesis and make it all make sense and largely involves changing the ending. Um, but I'll start at the beginning. Because this will be slowly revealed, especially as things, you know, uh, hasten towards the climax. So, there are a zillion of planets in the galaxy, and some of them just have this metaphysical energy called um, the fruits of being. And the first one that came in, that uh, existed, was the fruit of life. And there was this being that we called Jehovah, who ate of the fruit of life. And over time, he didn't eat, like, physically, it's a fruit. He just, you know, absorbed its energy somehow. And he became the first angel. Because he has the fruit of life, it gives him superpowers. You know, he can fly around in space. He's a huge monster thing. He can transform. That's what the fruit of life does. Um, And he started up this whole thing with angels. The angels have this life cycle where the deal is they make an egg, and then they shoot the egg off into space, and it, lands on a planet somewhere, burrows into the planet, and sucks away at its energy. And then the thing matures, and it bursts out as a new angel, and it, you know, continues the thing. 
And because they're not like a regular species, they're a whole fruit of life thing. That's why every angel is completely different from all the other angels. Um, so Earth has a different fruit. It has the fruit of wisdom. And that means if that fruit matures, and there's a whole like the ripening of the fruit thing that takes millions or billions of years, uh, then this pe the creatures of this planet can evolve intelligence and we can make machines and we can travel to space through our you know wisdom and so forth. And so eventually it puts us on the same power level as the Avas, I mean, as, as the as the angels. Uh, once we, you know, once the fruit totally ripens and we, you know, achieve our um, our potential. Um, so about 65 million years ago, uh, there was an egg, which would later be called the second angel, or I'm sorry, the first angel. We would call it Adam. Adam came crashing down to Earth and slammed into Antarctica. And this caused the first impact, which was the death of the dinosaurs. I know, realistically, the death of dinosaurs could not have been caused by an impact into Antarctica, but let's just imagine that that's how it happened somehow. Maybe there was another rock that was nearby also, but... Yeah, and considering that all, pretty much the most accepted theory that we have right now about how the dinosaurs went extinct was, yeah. is that a massive asteroid hit in the Chicxulub Peninsula in Mexico. Right, okay. And not Japan. I know. Well, no, this, he didn't land. He had Antarctica. We're not in Japan yet. Oh, I thought that was the... No, the first impact, Adam hits the thing and kills off the dinosaurs. Um, now, there was an angel named Lilith. And Lilith was incredibly unique among angels because she perceived that Earth contained the fruit of life. And she decided this was valuable. And it needed to be protected. Uh, and she saw Adam was sucking out all our planetary energy and it was going to kill off everything. And normally it just kills off all life. You know, even bacteria somehow, it's a metaphysical thing. Um, so Lilith embeds herself into the Earth um, in Japan. Now, she doesn't choose that for any particular reason. She just happens to be there. She goes down and she uh, counteracts Adam's effect. As he is draining energy from us, she is providing energy back to us. So uh, human being or you know, life progresses. Eventually, human beings evolve. The fruit starts to ripen. We develop technology, things like this. The whole time, Adam is sucking out energy, and um, Lilith is putting it back in. Uh, and over you know many millions of years, Lilith eventually figures out how to grant visions to humans. Not whenever she wants to. It just takes a huge amount of effort, and you know it doesn't always work, type of thing. But she gets lucky and happens to grant visions to these people. And they wrote down the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, most of the Dead Sea Scrolls are what we have in real life. It's just some religious texts and stuff. But there's some secret scrolls which tell very specifically what angels are and how this energy works and the fruit of life and the fruit of wisdom and, you know, a bunch of stuff we need to know. Um, now, for a long time, people had read this and they thought it was crazy. They thought, you know, this couldn't be an authentic document or it's a document nobody cares about or whatever. Um, but as the science advanced... We looked at some of their the teachings the scrolls had on energy, this weird type of energy called AT, and we discovered it was kind of true. You know, like they didn't have all the details on the scroll, but the basics were clearly there, and it didn't make any sense um, that the physics of the real world would match up with what it thought to be a totally crazy scroll that meant nothing. Well, the scroll says that there are these two angels buried in the earth, one's in Antarctica, one's in Japan. So this is when Sele gets founded. Originally just to figure out what the frick is going on with this and keeping everything secret because they think this could potentially get lots of power this way and, you know, maybe uh, make lots of profit or, or rule the world even. I don't know. So they send out an expedition uh, to Antarctica, another one to Japan. The Japan one finds Lilith and the one to Antarctica finds Adam. And when they get there, they poke him with a stick, essentially. You know, they're, trying, they're just doing experiments or whatever. Well, this causes Adam to wake up. Now, because of Lilith, Adam's whole egg cycle has been totally fricked up. And because of that, when he wakes up, he's only alive for about 10 seconds before he explodes. And that is second impact. And that is the year 2000. Um, now, as Adam explodes, he cries out into the universe at this super liminal cry that angels have to communicate with each other. And he screams out that Lilith has killed him. Now, angels don't have the fruit of wisdom, so they don't understand culture. They don't really much have language you know, to, to the development that we have. But if they have any rule at all, there's one rule, and that is no angel shall kill another. And if any angel does kill another, they themselves will be killed. This is very simple, you know. Uh, they're one rule that they have. 
So, we do the math. The second rule is no, no one talks about Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> so we do the math. And we find out there's a certain, and Adam's cry, by the way, um, you know, like a, like a normal voice, it gets softer as the distance goes further. So it only reaches so far. We do the math, and we find out, again, from Dead Sea Scrolls, there are a certain number of angels within this radius who would have heard Adam's cry. And they can move through space at this certain speed. Um, they can only move super luminal when they're not right next to a planet, you know, we have that standard rule. Otherwise, they could just frick right through the Earth and blow us all up. Um... So we know how fast they're going to get here, and in about 2014, 2015, they're going to start landing. And every one of them is going to march towards Lilith and is going to try and kill her, because that is the rule of the angels. Except for some of them. They shoot some... Well, actually, that's a lie. <laughs> some of them don't march. Some of them electric slide, yeah. others boogie, some yep. do the locomotion. And the eighth angel actually Gangnam Styles all the <laughs> Angel Gangnam Style. <laughs> just imagining the eighth angel while just doing this all across China. <laughs> and just, the Chinese are just like, yeah, just let the Japanese take care of it. Right, so the deal is, uh, because we evolved all these years with the blessing of Lilith, her energy, uh, we still require that. If Lilith dies, the entire human race dies. Like, we all just spontaneously fall over and, like, decompose. Because we need this energy. And it's said that someday the fruit of wisdom might ripen, in which case we would you know, live on our own, we'd be cut from the umbilical cord. But for right now, we need her to stay alive, and here come a bunch of god monsters coming to kill her. So... Damn the, it, god monsters! So Sele... Yeah. To ruin things for humanity. <laughs> yeah. So Sele, you know, gets into high gear and makes a bunch of contacts and such of this whole you know, conspiracy thing uh, and informs certain government officials, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and they build Tokyo 3 completely around Lilith. They put Terminal Dogma around here, Central Dogma around that, Tokyo 3 around that, Nerve, and they build the Avas, again, using some of this and AT I'll technology. Right. the Emperor's New Grove. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, the basic plan. And. What everyone's told, what almost everyone working at Nerve and shooting, including Shinji, is told is that there's a certain number of angels coming, and we need to kill them all. And once we kill the last angel, we'll be safe forever. <laughs> the, the war will be over, because no more angels could hear Adam's cry. Well, it turns out it's more complicated than that. Because you remember the very first angel, Jehovah. He lives at the center of the all galaxy. All I said was this for me, it was a meal fit for Jehovah. You're making it worse on yourself, you know. How much worse is it going to be? I'm getting stoned to death. I'm going to say it all I like. Jehovah, Jehovah. <laughs> I also like Monty Python's Life of Brian. Yeah, I haven't even seen that. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's not, it's not compared to Holy Grail, but it's still Monty Python. It's good. Okay, anyway. Uh, so Jehovah lives at the center of the galaxy with a uh, huge group of millions of angels called the Host. And, and they just your base. And they swirl around him. Um... And one of Jehovah's powers is he is the great listener. And he could hear the cry of any angel, no matter how soft it may be. So, And also he moves along with the host. They move incredibly fast compared to regular angels. Because these are the super angels. These are the archangels, essentially. So, Sele has done the math on this, too. And finds out that, okay, the first angel shows up in 2014, 2015. And then they keep showing up through 20, you know, 16 or something. I guess it can't be too long because Shinji has to stay young. Over the course of six months, let's say, they show up. Um, and then the freaking host will show up. So we're going to spend all the world's resources killing one angel at a time. And then millions of angels will show up and they will eat us all. We have absolutely no hope. Which leads Unless they're lactose intolerant. <laughs> In which case... <laughs> The fact that we're mammals and we produce milk will be saved then. Oh my gosh, that is so weird. All right. Uh, You've known me for this long, and you don't expect me to be weird by now. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. So, um, I hope they can hear you, by the way. You're all the way over there. But, um, so, the, so, so yeah, the host is coming after we defeat, defeat the so-called last angel. So this leads us to instrumentality, which is this super secret last ditch attempt to sort of kind of save humanity and here's how it works they have these weird energy generators all around the planet and it takes many years to calibrate them exactly right you know because it's incredibly complex blah 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 but the idea is 
We're going to use the Avas to defend ourselves long enough to turn instrumentality on. And when we turn it on, here's what it does. It breaks down everyone's AT fields, which are the barriers that separate one soul from another. It merges all of the souls into one being. It removes the fruit of wisdom, which is hard to do and why it takes them so many years to calibrate this right, and inserts the fruit of life, having been replicated from like the corpse of an angel. Being such, the entire human race collectively becomes an angel, and no angel shall kill another angel, and therefore Lilith may die, but we're okay. And so essentially, we're 90% committing suicide here. <laughs> because Except for the 10%, which are soulless, and they're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> but like, so when you lose the fruit of wisdom, you lose consciousness in its normal sense, you lose all your memories, you know. It's very, very close to just, we're going to die. It's either we're going to die straight up, or we're going to turn ourselves into an unstoppable god machine that has no human soul. It's utterly dark and horrible, right? And Shinji's going to find this out near the end, and he's going to freak out. <laughs> Matt is stroking his chin like, oh, we could be a horrible <laughs> monster. Utterly horrible god monster, you say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I love that sense of absolute bleakness. That Even Sele, their ultimate plan is just so terribly dark as this, as we essentially all die and like oh, kind of, kind of survive, but not really. Now, in the meantime, the other big thing of Ava is that Gendo has a plan. He has his own plan. What's his plan? And so do the Cylons. And so do the Cylons. Um, so here's, here's my plan of Gendo, and it's, it's this lovely combination of motivations. A, total selfishness. B, uh, tremendous love for his wife. Uh, C, a feeling that the world is fricked anyway. So his plan is to hack instrumentality. He has this thing to screw up the generators right at the last moment and make them do what he wants them to do. And what they're going to do is, uh, first off, resurrect his wife, which is a combination of a cloning thing and, like, using his memories. And, and like, necromancy. And necromancy, yeah. <laughs> Downside, he becomes a lich. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to resurrect his wife. That he's like, his phylactery is Lilith. The one person that he really cares about. Um... Uh, and then B, there's this uh, distant planet that he's like, you know, managed to, whatever. They have this fancy science thing that allows them to view distant planets. And he's discovered this one, and he's named it Eden. And it you know, supports human life extremely well, blah, blah, blah. And he's going to create a portal to teleport him and his wife to Eden. Now, the only problem with this is it takes up so much freaking energy that he has to burn everyone else alive in their souls. He uses the entire human race as the fuel for his freaking resurrection slash portal device. <laughs> the feeling, though, be... What do you mean coming back from the dead turned you into a lesbian? <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> I literally sacrificed everyone on Earth so we could like, repopulate the human race and you're a lesbian, though? Yeah. Like, yeah, sorry, men just don't do it for me. Oh! <laughs> um... I can see a picture of <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and it, se it severs the connection with Lilith, by the way. is a fancy way of doing that. Or, or no! <laughs> <laughs> this fancy thing. So they could kill Lilith and they'd be okay. So basically, like, two people would survive and they might have some kids. But really, like, in the long term, the human race doesn't much survive there because it's terrible incest and it's not going to work out. And in any case, even if the race did, you know, recreate itself, you lost six billion people or, or however many, you know, three billion that are left after the second impact. And it's terribly tragic. And here's a great thing. He was always a dick to Shinji, right? He's that's just his way. He's distant. He's cold. But he's especially a dick, even more on top of his original things, because he plans on murdering Shinji along with everyone else in the world. It doesn't have a portal enough for three people. It's just two. So I don't really want to be good enough to my son because I'm just going to kill him anyway. Frick that. <laughs> So he's an incredible dick, too. <laughs> so uh, we get near our end here, and, and through whatever course of events, Shinji finds out both of these plans and is freaking out because he thought he had killed the last angel. We had our celebration. You know, we thought we were okay. Um, and then somehow or other, or, or either maybe he finds out just before the last angel. Either way, it was going to be the last bit. We were going to be safe forever. And then he finds out, okay, we have option A. The host shows up, and we all die. Option B, instrumentality, and we all pretty much die anyway. But we become an immortal god machine. We become an immortal so god machine ass. with no soul. Option C, uh, we all burn to death, but two 
people, one of whom is a terrible dick, will survive. And the other is my father. But I'm... No. <laughs> um, so he's absolutely freaking out about that, uh, which, of course, is classic for Shinji. Now, here's what happens. Uh, the We fight the final angel. The host is on its way, but, not you know, a couple you know hours out at least. And uh, instrumentality is ready just in time. We have two hours to spare. We turn it on. Everyone... Um, oh, we turn it on, and then the, the Gendo activates his hacking thing. And he activates the, you know, the resurrection bit. Briefly resurrects this image of his wife, who says, What the hell? Why would you sacrifice everyone else in the world? And this is seriously this, this, what's the name for this moment? I want to say armor-piercing question, but without a question. I guess that was a question. I just asked whatever. The fuck are you thinking, It's a, it's ass. a whiplash moment for him. It's a, you know... Um, but he, he loses his cool. Uh, cause what this the is hell, hero? One the, what the hell, villain almost. Yeah, but whatever. It, it, he thought he was justified, and here's the one person in the world whose opinion he really values, the one person he really cares about, and she says, what the hell, no, we're not doing this, refuses the thing. So the whole thing breaks down, and then uh, Sele has to like quickly reset instrumentality because here comes the host, right? The host shows up. I want Shinji to have like visions in earlier episodes of the host showing up. He doesn't even know what that means. But, like, you know, he has some sort of psychic thing because of his connection to the Avas. And here they show up, and it's, like, multicolored static because there's so many angels. And they start enveloping the whole world, like, not touching it yet, just going to make, like, a big sphere and then eat us all at once. I love the idea of, like, uh, about, like... They're showing up in orbit, and then they just keep getting hit by orbital debris. It's in orbit around the Earth. Yeah. It's like, no, we should... Oh, I have a Hubble telescope in my eye! Oh, human bastards! Yeah, um, so uh, he uh, they're all shot. They're all shot, and Jehovah himself is huge, and he keeps like transforming, you know. But you can tell it's him because he's the big one. Um, and uh, they activate instrumentality, and we do essentially episodes twenty five and twenty six. Shinji goes into his mind state thing, which everyone else is doing too. And Shinji, in the midst of all this, comes to his epic epiphany: my life is worth living. Rejects instrumentality. Uh, and then, because of that moment, and at that moment, the fruit of wisdom ripens. It had been foreshadowed before, but they thought it would take like another million years. They didn't think it was a deal. But this, this insight from the boy who had suffered so much and who clings to the value of life regardless of all the crap that has gone on, that is like the, the final key in the puzzle. And you know in the theme song, where if you read the translation, it says, young boy, rise up into the heavens and become a legend. He literally does that. Mm. He rises up. He's like this like blue glow around him, whatever. He soars up with all the angels like freaking out. And there's like this suddenly this AT field around the entire earth type of thing. Um, fly, and he flies up to Jehovah and he like stares him down and says something along the lines of, you know, you, you didn't understand. You could never understand but I will teach you. And he puts his hand on Jehovah's flesh, who's like, you know, cowed enough to allow this to happen even. And there's this then whole... the ass kicking begins. No. <laughs> and then we have... The... No. Shinji absorbed the abilities of Bruce Lee! <laughs> but then we have... Oh, no. But then we have um, a little bit like the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's like this huge rush of images, and it's all about the value of life. And Shinji is show, psychically telling Jehovah and all the angels that they are valuable and they're not like vermin or something and you can't kill Lilith because you can't kill us and Lilith herself had good reasons. This huge like, you know, quick montage and then finally he breaks off and Jehovah like transforms into this more human face and says, you know, we we did not understand and Shinji says, please leave us in peace. And it's a huge epic moment. I'm just like summarizing it. And then they all leave. They all just like fly away and Shinji like descends back to the earth and, you know, turns into like normal human form again. And that's the solution. The whole world, I love this, is saved through Shinji's emotional growth. Because everything rests on that. All of our plot lines are all about these kids suffering. And he overcomes that suffering and has hope. And especially with the history of the guy who directed this had previously been considering suicide. You know, this is a very... it's The whole... Sele's plan is like suicide, you know? Everything here is death or suicide in one, or murder in the case of Gendo. And we reject all that terribleness, and through that develops this supernatural means with which to get rid of the angels and survive uh, the attack of the host. And then from then on, it's just it's uh, you know wrapping things up. Um, you know, we're nerd, and we're here to say 
we're gonna feed you to the angels today. <laughs> Um, I thought, like, you know, Sailor could disband itself and be like, oh, shit, we almost killed the world. But, you know, like... Yeah, they should we, be running from lynch mobs. Yeah, I thought Shinji might psychically grant everyone knowledge of all these secrets. So, like, you know, there's no more secrets anymore. You know, no no seek evil conspiracy can mess with stuff. Um, I thought Gendo could come to Shinji apologetic, having been taught by his wife, you know. And, and he would sort of freak out and and again would get on his knees and he'd be crying and sort of hug shinji and shinji says to gendo fuck you dickbag well that too but no no but he says to gendo it's all right you were just scared and what a thing for shinji to say to his father when shinji's been the one who was freaking out all the time and his father was the hard ass you know um and then lilith dies i was gonna say she was on her last breath sort of anyway and Shinji sort of, like, psychically rises her up out of the ground. He has powers when he wants to, kind of. And they say, like, goodbye to her, and she passes away. And the fruit of wisdom is ripened now, so we're okay. You know, the human race will live on. And the very, very end, someone, one of his friends, says something like, what do we do now? And they're looking off into the sunset, and he just says, now we live. And that would be the end. I would have gone for, well... Taquitos! Come on! I'm buying! Drinks are on the house! We just saved the world, bitches! Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Thank Chicks dig the superpowers! <laughs> I'm gonna get some food in! Okay, I, I pretty much exist in this review show just to ruin any moment of happiness anyone else has. Ever. But I I, know, I, I really do love this idea. If, if I wish... I mean, I'm sure Rebuild of Evangelion has its own ending. Hopefully it all ties things together properly, but I, I it's good chance it'll be weird and ambiguous like the other endings um maybe you know they've been talking about making a live action film and maybe they could use this plot line there finally or live action trilogy actually they're talking about um but yeah it, it ties everything together in my mind you know there's i never really knew what instrumentality was exactly or why it was or the host well, you know i mentioned that so instrumentality had a reason like why are we otherwise you know merging everybody's at fields i don't get but the oh and the host works so well with this whole despair ethos that uh the show has everything is always teetering on the brink and shinji comes back from the brink and saves the world and i love it and he rises to the heavens and becomes a legend oh and by the way the whole project i realized going to eden with two people you could you could call that something like the genesis project Except it's the second version of uh, Earth, so it'd be sort of like the Neon Genesis Project. The Genesis Project? <laughs> oh, dear God. You realize what that means, right? What? It's going to be stolen by an Indian Superman <laughs> who was genetically enhanced and was stranded on SETI Alpha 5 All right. by James T. Kirk! <laughs> but, but SETI Alpha 6... This is SETI Alpha 5! <laughs> I love that movie, by the way. Yeah, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. Yeah, Very greatest good. movie, uh, sci-fi movie I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, um, I actually have a th th thoughts on how mine would work out. Okay. Okay, now, the difference between yours and mine is you would, focus close. you would focus more on the emotional side of that things. That is my absolute goal, correct. Me, I'd focus more on how this would have affected society. Okay. Um... And how far some people are willing to go to survive. Okay. Uh, it would start off in Antarctica. Okay. Uh, where Sele, which has already been established, is investigating a site from the uh, from an alien landing that they call the First Ancestral Race. They'd already found one of these landing sites in um, uh, in Japan, uh -huh. which was well the Black Egg. Okay. Um, this landing site. Uh, and that landing site had a damaged first ancestral being inside of it. Okay. Lilith. Oh, why don't you just call them angels? I was confused who these ancestral beings were for a second. Okay, okay, well, actually, be, uh, yeah, it, actually, no, 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 because uh, the ancestral beings and the angels are separate things. Are they? But so Lilith is an ancestral being now, not an angel. Uh, yes. Okay. But she's like mortally wounded she's trapped in stasis she's okay uh, if she like was alive for even a second she would die okay wait that doesn't sound right <laughs> if if yeah i know what you mean, I mean if but, they let her out of her pod she would die but okay. they received interesting hints that there was a second site on earth set up to observe the first ancestral beings are obsessed with evolution 
Okay. Uh, and they want to figure out how life came into existence. Okay. Uh, so they've been stu- they're like eggs all over the cosmos, where the first ancestral beings were like incredibly powerful, near godlike beings. Okay. But they don't know the origin of the species. Of their own species. Of any species. Okay. They they want to know where the spark of life comes from. Oh oh, the original spark of life itself. Yes. Where that came from. Okay. Uh, I mean, they know where they came from, but they don't okay. know why they came. Okay. From. Okay. So sort of sort of like us trying to figure out at which part on Earth did the first molecule turn into a cell. Uh yeah, pretty much. Okay. But on a galactic scale. Yeah, okay. they, they have, like, these outposts all over the galaxy where they're each conducting their own little experiments, like, yeah. taking the life forms, trying to poke and prod and figure out, like, how do these people, these creatures turn from... Figure out the lines of evolution, essentially. Yeah, and how they become sing, sapient and sophant and whatever. Okay. Um, oh, they, uh, Sele finds coordinates in the Black Egg to a second research site on the earth okay a replacement for the first one okay um where they uh they they find it in antarctica where they they open it up and they find the first ancestral being inside this is adam um wait i thought this one was a replacement for lilith's yes yeah so he couldn't be the first ancestral being if he came later the race is known as the first ancestral oh oh beings. oh okay all right well just it's, it's um it's it's like um uh, in Babylon Five how there are a whole bunch of species termed first ones even though they weren't the okay, first. Okay, so he's not the first first one. He's the second first one that we uh, know of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyways, they find him and they try to glean secrets from him. Uh, they can talk to him or what? no? He okay. barely notices them because he's like so high and powerful above them. They're like microbes. And, he, and he's basically sitting inside this egg in Antarctica, just like chilling, like not doing anything? Well, yeah, the egg is kind of like a capsule that's feeding him all this sort of data. And oh, I, I see. Okay. okay. I mean, he's he's so far above everything on this planet. Like, what, what can we do? Okay. Well, humans fucks around with enough stuff, and they accidentally he kill Adam. Okay. Uh, but they don't really kill him. Oh. Uh, they, he makes a threatening gesture and they start attacking Adam. Okay. Because the United Nations is like, oh, this is a first contact situation. We have to be very careful about this. So like, he doesn't exterminate us or right. we don't exterminate him. Well, something went wrong. Actually, no one really knows what happens at first contact. Okay. Like the only witness was uh, Major Katsurugi, uh-huh. uh, Misato and... Well, she was like five at the time. Right, right. And all she really knows is that she was shoved into an escape pod and fired off into the ocean. Right, right. But something happened. And Adam exploded. Okay. Uh, no one knows why or how, but all that was left of Adam was this little embryo. The embry- Yeah, you notice I didn't ex- explicitly have the embryo thing, nor did I have the Lance of Longinus. Primarily, I'd like to get rid of the Lance of Longinus because I have no idea where it came from or anything like that. So that wasn't in my story, but go ahead. Okay, Lance of Longinus <laughs> probably won't appear in my story either. Yeah, but... I don't know what that is. Um, uh, except that the embryo isn't all that's left of him. Oh, where's the rest of it? Uh, well, the, the embryo is basically his physical form. Ah. All that's left of his... This is what they actually look like. They're just embryos. But they've evolved beyond the need for most physical bodies. They just need the little tiny core. Okay. Um, chunks of his energy, his soul, were scattered into the world. And I'm flailing my arms like a windmill. Ex- okay. Like the windmill was exploding. But <laughs> like right. they infected different things all over the world. Okay. And, and like they're... His mind is shattered and spread out over the whole world. Okay. All this, like, um, uh, there was one that took over a dolphin, and that became the one that Asuka killed in the over the rainbow. Interesting. So, so they basically his he, pieces of his soul create the angels out of the basis of pre-existing life forms. Yes. So, like, one bumps into a spider and it causes that one spider monster. One bumps into a flatworm and it causes that fourth angel. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, naturally, this causes second impact because, well, you're detonating an energy being that's the size of, well, an Ava. Right. And that's a lot of energy. Antarctica is gone now. Right. Fricks up the earth. Second impact. 
But Sele is still working on interesting things. Uh. They find like interesting references to what Adam's true powers are, and they learn that oh, he would re- even if this happens, there would still be that little embryonic core, uh. and at time and effort, they go and recover it. Mm-hmm. But one of the things they're most interested in is immortality. Because okay. all the members of Sele are, well, they're, in the most scientific terms possible, they're fucking old. <laughs> okay. They, they want to be immortal. Old. Okay. Good motivation. They, they want to be immortal. But at the same time, humanity is realized, the United Nations releases this information. What happened was an alien life form attacked us in Antarctica. Okay. And this, even though we managed to kill it, it destroyed Antarctica and the world is fucked now. Okay. We need to get ready because we don't know how many more of these things there are. Okay. And that leads to um, the things that I suggested. More military buildup. Focus on multinationalism. Hmm. Um, Which you could technically do that with you know with my thing too a little bit at least at least a little bit well but, yeah but but yeah i know you're saying okay so then but, you add in all the stuff you mentioned earlier okay um for study the uh embryonic atom is mo- aside from a few samples mm-hmm. which are taken to like secret bases elsewhere in the world yeah is moved to be with lilith okay in terminal dogma underneath uh in the black egg now why do we have a huge city protecting lilith um Honestly, at first it was a research base. Okay. To study the Black Egg and Lilith, because this is hyper advanced alien technology. Right. We could use this for so many things, and it's revealed like over the course of the series that like uh, Lilith's Black Egg is responsible for like a cure to the common cold, to all sorts of cancers. Oh, to okay. All sorts That'd of be cool. Cool things. Uh, you see like um, planes moving around on weird propulsion systems that were based on technologies discovered there that we've crudely reverse engineered. Uh huh. Um, and finally, the day comes when um, the best experts on Earth notice something huge has started to move towards Tokyo 3. Right. And so they start moving military platforms and such over there towards Tokyo 3. Do Avas exist yet? Avas exist. And why did we build them? Because we thought this would happen? Uh, yes, because we... Uh, actually... Uh, the one problem I have, one of the problems that I have with Pacific Rim is the tagline "To build, fight monsters. We made monsters," hmm. which doesn't really make sense because we didn't build monsters. We built giant robots to fight the monsters. Yeah. But in this case, we did make monsters using our imperfect knowledge of mm-hmm. of the Avas. We uh, cloned mm-hmm. first ancestral beings. Imperfect knowledge of the. First, first ancestral, ancestral beings. beings. We cloned first ancestral beings. To make giant robots because we were afraid that angels were going to show up. Yeah. Part of the thing was we were hoping that we could use these things to make first contact with these ancestral beings. Ah, and dual like, purpose. Okay. It, it'd be like the Avatar bodies from uh, from the movie Avatar. Wow, except on a very big scale. Interesting. Well, the, they were on a very big scale. Right, no, no, I'm just saying. It's just, it's just different that way. It's also the same reason why I'm uh, in Robotech. Veritex were designed to turn into uh, humanoid shapes. Ah. Uh, because the skeletons they found on board the SDF-1 were 50 feet tall. They wanted something to be able to go hand-to-hand with that. Interesting. Um, but anyways, um, Ray is sent out first to try to make contact with this being. Mm-hmm. It's not a first ancestral being. It's an angel. <laughs> ah, it's, they thought it was another ancestral being. Yeah, it had a similar energy signature, okay. which is later shortened to blue pattern. Okay, okay. Um, this is the first angel. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ray gets her ass kicked when fighting it. Okay. Uh, the thing that Shinji fights, that's actually the second angel. Oh, so the first one died? The first one died after we, after like uh, the world's military poured so much lead into it that it was more lead than flesh. Okay, okay. Um, but in doing that, we learned about the angel. We started recovering pieces of its corpse. And in turn, we started realizing oh, crap, there could be more of these things. Mm. We start uh, producing more Avas. Okay. Uh, Shinji and Asuka and all the other people from the from his class are drafted. They're... Okay. Uh, because... Of... Yeah, do you have a reason for why kids pilot the Avas? Because um... I had one for mine that I forgot to mention. Um, uh, shit, I forgot about that. Um, uh, so, so what I remember the whole deal with Adam who was sucking out our energy and stuff. 
<clears throat> so everyone who's born prior to his death uh, has something in them called the Curse of Adam. Oh, okay, good. And okay. because of that, they can't pilot Avas. So everyone born after that can pilot Avas, and the oldest people we have since that time are 14 years old, so here comes Shinji. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm stealing that idea. That's um, fine. Like, um, every single human being on Earth has like tiny bits of Adam inside of them. But since children grew... If you were born the... afterwards, so little bits of the energy got into you if, well, you, were lo- if you were alive at the time. Yeah. But if you were born afterwards, the energy is not in you, so you're okay. No, no, no. If you were born after that, you're, you're, it's still in you. It's just that that's been incorporated into you from the ground up. Oh, so it's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, As it's, opposed to being a flaw, it's like original design. It's like shoving a, a metal rod through a wooden house uh-huh. and versus uh, using a metal rod as a part of the house. And building and it building. around the rod. As opposed to firing a chunk of metal through <laughs> your neighbor's house. Right. Yeah. Don't do that at home, kids. <laughs> Don't do half the shit we say at home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they're trained to use these angels. Mm-hmm. I mean, use these uh, Avas mm-hmm. to fight against the angels. Okay. And all the while, we're seeing more and more military buildup because they keep heading towards um, Tokyo 3. And for the whole series, we don't know why. But we're also getting like hints that Sele is playing with the fragments of Adam that they stole. Okay. Uh, and they're like make, doing cloning experiments. Mm-hmm. And uh, like the whole time, Kawaru is um, uh, like advising them and talking to them. Okay. Okay. Um, so Kawaru is an angel in this continuity. Yes, he is. And they know that. Um. Yes. And if they ask him, "Hey, could you tell your angel buddies to stop killing us?" What does he say? Uh. Well, see, that's part of the thing. Okay. Um. Adam really hates us now. Ah, right. Um, and it turns out that he's conscious this whole time. It's just the consciousness is spread over, like, a large area. Okay. Um, Kiwaru and, and uh, all the angels have an effect similar to the Reapers. Okay. Basically, if you spend too much time in their presence, you can start to become believe the things that uh, Adam believes. Oh, so Sele has been mind control. It's not mind control so much as there. He's just so powerful that it just affects things around. It's him. just like a mental magnetism. Like, uh, yes, uh, um, which explains where some of these cults come from. Interesting. Like um, cults that believe that the angels are here to cleanse the imperfection known as humanity from the world. Okay. And we'd have a whole episode where like some of the pilots are kidnapped by these cults. Um, Right, to investigate them. Or we, we, the audience would investigate them. Yeah. And we'd have, like, a continually building up weapons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, most of the series happens the same, except uh, there's therapy, there's... Um, <laughs> Asuka is slightly less of a bitch. Okay. She's, she's a little more well-adjusted. A little. Okay. Not, don't okay. remove all the interesting things. Yeah, I was going to say. But um, they're all damaged. But not but that learned, damaged. They've learned okay. coping mechanisms. Okay. Okay. So it's not like, oh, I'm hopeless. I mustn't run away. He just uh, turned like, that down a okay, little. Okay. 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 I'm scared, but this thing is trying to kill everything that I know. Mm-hmm. I have to stay focused. Err. Okay. That could perhaps could develop over the se- course okay, of the and, series. And like I said, over the course of it, uh, different upgrades are being added on. You to love the your upgrades. Go ahead. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a natural progression of things. Yeah. Uh, and with like multiple trillions of dollars being funneled into the Ava program to defend us from right from the angels. Right. Well, it eventually turns out that um, uh, well, Commander Ikari has been spending a lot of time with the little with the little Adam thing. He right. eventually implants it into his hand. Right. This is bad. Okay. Because the tiny parasitic embryo thing is different from the angels. Okay. It wants to reconnect with the energy. Okay. From the angels. Okay. Which is bad. Because it's in the angels. Uh, yeah, it's in the angels. Once it connects with that energy, it can recall all of the energy back into itself. At which point it will turn back into full-sized giant of light Adam. So does Gendo have like this psychic thing telling him to go touch an angel now? Like, what do you mean? Like, if it wants the energy? Uh, yeah. Is it just but like? It's, but since it's not like a, it's just a little thing like this. Yeah. It's not. 
he doesn't have like full control over him. He can exert like minor control. So minor mind control on Gento. Yeah. Okay. Like he doesn't like. He's still cold and assholeish, mm-hmm. but that's tempered not with um. I'm being mean to Shinji because Ava's run on trauma. <laughs> that's like um. Okay, this is our world. We need to defend it. But it, the, the thing starts feeding him like lies. Like if I combine with an angel, I will be able to. Uh, have superpowers. No, I will be able to bring back my dead wife. Ah, so it's all a big delusion. Interesting, yes. interesting. Um, well, one interesting thing is Ray. Mm. The reason that they're so in- the Sele is interested in her is because it turns out that she's technically immortal. Interesting. Um... But it's immortal in the sense of elves from Lord of the Rings. Oh, Once okay, you, yeah, at yeah. At a certain point, you just don't age She's anymore. ageless immortal. But if yeah. you get shot in the head, you're still dead. Now, why is she ageless immortal? She just got lucky DNA or what? Uh, no, she's still an angel. I mean, she's still like a first ancestral human hybrid clone project. Is she now? I forgot. I don't think you mentioned that part. You said the Avas are based off of cloning. Did we also make Ray based off of that? I mean, she was yeah, always she's, a clone. But she's, she's a, a separate project. She's a separate was... project. So she she's like an immortal human half ancestral now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Well, as the series goes on, Kiwaru is like advising on how this project will work. But at the same time, there are these mass production angels also being created. Yeah. But they're being mass created... production Avas. Avis. Yep. There are a lot of weird terms in this show. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's fine. And these are being built in with the upgrades that our Avas are getting from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're more powerful. They have better range. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one thing that we are keeping is that there are multiple rays okay. in tanks, just in case. Okay. Yeah, this is a big investment for them. They don't want to just squander it. Right. Just, they want to see how this... Ray project works, mm-hmm. which led to the development of mind transference technology. Interesting. Finally, say, okay, let's say that after like the Kewaru uh, still dies, like in canon. Okay, the head popping. Yeah. Yep. But by this point, Sele has been perfecting other things. Okay. Namely, they've created clones of themselves, where they are. Uh, I forget what the exact term is. Nephilim, uh, they're they're human first ancestral hybrids. Okay, you made a technical term for that. Uh, no, the, I heard it used in like another uh, Ava fanfic. It was used to describe like um, creatures like Ray. Okay, where they're in, you know they're part angel, hmm. but uh, they have created themselves bodies and transferred their minds into these bodies. Okay. Well, the problem is that now Adam's subtle mind control becomes really blatant. Since all the energy was dispersed every time an angel dies, mm-hmm. it now it was looking for a place to go, and now it has a bunch of new host bodies. Uh, though it can also transform random dolphins and stuff. It but... wasn't exactly thinking at that point. Okay, it was so... like it's it's like if you chop off your arm. Your first concern is. Okay, what are my best options? Should I try to put it on ice? Should I try to get a, a replacement arm? Should I get a prosthetic? Should I go into therapy? No, your thought right. is, ah, my <laughs> fucking arm is gone! Okay, but as soon as the energy senses the existence of a half-ancestral body, it, like, moves towards that body? Like, it's... Well, it also helps. Remember, Kewaro has been advising? Them. Yeah, yeah. He basically made the body so that they'd be ideal for possession by this energy. Okay, so does the energy just, like, fly through the air, or, like, yeah. what? So do all the angels suddenly not... Do they turn back into dolphins and stuff because no, they lost their energy? after all of them have been dead. Oh, after they all died. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Worse, each... The energy goes from the, fir- from the first angel destroyed goes down to the next one. Oh. And on to the next one, which is why... They know, get bigger and better. Yeah. They're, they're okay. stronger. Interesting. Um, but anyways, uh, now they... Kuar has had all this plan from the beginning. Okay. Uh, when he knowingly sacrifices himself. So the Sele drones, Mm -hmm. which is, they're basically backseat drivers in their own bodies, hijack the mass production Avas, which are pretty much now the most powerful Avas on the planet. Ah. They, they, it is huge battle that goes on all over the Tokyo 3. as like Ava, regular Avas duel their mass production models, conventional weapons are firing like crazy. 
to try to take down these monstrosities. In the end, like, despite how Asuka is, like, killing things, and how there are all the, everyone's fighting together, there's even more Avas than in canon. Like, Toji didn't get his ass reamed by, by, like, the third or whatever angel. Right. Um, uh, so it's, it's all, but still, they're getting stomped. Finally, one last, the, the final mass production model, he's absorbed the energy from all his angel brothers. Well, uh, Sele, Angel, Drone. <laughs> a little brothers, complicated, yeah. Hers. And he drives Shinji back to one of the, the elevators to the geo front and stomps him through. Okay. Suddenly they're on the geo front. Right. And at this point, the, the parasite has, has tricked Gendo into thinking, come, come, make contact with the Sele drone. Okay. And uh, the Sele drone gets out of his Ava because... Shinji's Ava is, like, wrecked at this point. Mm -hmm. um, gets out, and he makes contact with Gendo. Okay. At this point, the roof blows off of the... of uh, the whole... Geofront? Geofront. Yeah. It caves in, and out of it emerges the giant of light himself. Adam. Adam. Like, people try to fight it, but, like, you see this massive death toll going on. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is glance at a regular Ava and boom! Mm -hmm. it, it just, it, it's not even exploded. It's just gone. Right, right. Just erased from existence. Mm -hmm. It's this godlike being, something that has watched us since we were in our infancy, and he's pissed, man. Okay. Um... Uh, crap. You know, I didn't actually think of how to end that. I just <laughs> got Well, that apparently we all die. I mean, no, 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 we don't die. <laughs> I mean, it really looks that way, unless Adam's got some sort of weak spot. I don't know. We attack his Achilles heel. Uh, oh, wait. I forgot. Yeah. Shinji got out of the map. Uh, Shinji survives, mm -hmm. like, obviously, because he's the main character. <laughs> but he yeah. notices the mass production model nearby. Yeah that is still juiced up, ready to go, and virtually undamaged. Okay. So he uses that to try to fight Adam. Okay. How one of the... Th well, one of the things is... One of the things that I want to explore is how far are you willing to go to survive as a species, as a person? Okay. And sometimes, well, we've got to decide we're not worthy of survival. Interesting idea. Or... Or our survival is incompatible with the needs of others. Okay. Uh, one of the things that still happens is that we reverse engineered the S2 engine. Okay. Which provides all the energy possible. Yep. And by reverse engineered, I meant Ava Unit 01 went berserk and ate it. That was such a cool episode. Okay, that stays the same because it was a really cool episode. I just episode. love that, like, it's alive! <laughs> like, oh um, god. Uh, Shinji, in a moment of utter desperation, uh, decides to repeat that because he figures, oh God, I need every advantage I can get. Mm. And one of the things he taught me in basic was never squander an advantage. Okay. So he reconsumes the S2 engine from the remains of O1. Okay. And then in his new super Ava, he goes to fight Adam. Okay. It's... It doesn't go well for Shinji. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, people are still firing missiles, but at this point, it doesn't even matter. Right. Adam is walking out into the middle of the ocean. He's going to drive it. He's going to blow up the world at this point. Right. He's insane with anger. Right. Shinji eventually grapples with him mm. and detonates the S2 engine. Self-sacrifice. Yeah. Uh... So, it's not that he wants to live. He's decided he wants to live. But he realizes Ooh. that if he wants to live, and so does everyone else... The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Say what you want about <laughs> that movie. It's awesome. <laughs> it's an awesome movie. And that, honestly, that, there's quite an interesting thing if you, if you twisted the phrase and went, my life is worth living, and then he sort of looks out at a crowd of people, whatever, and your lives are worth living too. So I live all your lives! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, then he, and then he blows himself up to kill Adam. Um, now, you are going to have to explain how somehow blowing up Adam this time kills him, where last time it just infected dolphins and all that. Oh, Something um, special with the S2 engine, I guess, that it, it, it does different sort of damage. Um, ah, AT fields. 
it neutralizes the hmm. it neutralizes the protection around the atom around core. the core. So you kill yeah. the core. It kills the core, and all the angels are gone forever. Of course, this also nearly this also causes a tidal wave, massive massive earthquakes and tremors, and nearly dewaters the Pacific Ocean, which is how big the explosion is. That sounds like suck for the rest of the human race. Well, yeah, but they survive. Oh, good to know. Uh, and eventually, like, um, uh, you see, like, in future times, all the technology we gain from from this war, all the stuff we research is being used to A make... big the... old statue to Shinji, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, but they, they're going out into space, they're bringing back resources, and eventually, uh, at the end, they show that we are worthy of survival. Interesting. Because the Earth is now fixed. It is beautiful again. It is the blue-green marble. If you're going to go with worthy of survival as a huge thing, then you have to bring in um, some sort of misanthropy as a competing theme. Like the angels, especially with that, that the, the mind control thing. Yeah, the People the, will be the saying... Cults. That's what I was going okay, with the, the cult. cults. The cult, the feeling but of like we don't some deserve of them are, to survive. Only okay. some of them were like directly influenced by angels. Right. Others are just generally the world sucks, and you could show like different areas of the world and how that would work. Huh. Like many of the most populous wor- places in the world are still slums compared to Tokyo Three because they are slums. So that could be like a continue. People say here and there. Cultist says a guy says random people say I'm not sure if we really deserve to survive. You know, like we're, and that that should be not just that um, the the world sucks because Adam blew up, but the world sucks because people are sucky to each other, because mm-hmm. that that becomes more just deserve to survive versus can we survive, and if you want to, you remember the Jet Alone thing? Was Jet Alone in the manga? Jet Alone was not in the manga, but that's one thing that I would like to keep in there. So that would be. If it, there was a little bit of infighting in that way, you know, oh, Jet Alone's doing their own thing, we're going to sabotage them. If you took that up further, that would be interesting. And a matter of fact, now here I am, I'm changing a bunch of stuff all of a sudden, but you're talking about internationalism, right? Yeah. Suppose we don't start off quite so international, and everyone's competing. It's a little more World War Z, where everyone's freaking out at the apocalypse, mm-hmm. and they hate each other. Yeah. And through the course of the series, we unite, and we prove our our moral standing, and we say... You know, now that we're united, we make these greater efforts and and, and therefore eventually win against. Oh, I'd like to see like in the in the later episodes, like um, uh, jet alone techno, like um, uh, let's say that Finland or like the European Union was sponsoring jet alone. Uh-huh. Uh Like have an angel destroy Paris and burn England to the ground. Uh huh. Um, have that happen, and that like really emphasizes the need for. The rest of the world is not immune to angel attacks. And that's, that'd be something else. They ultimately, all the angels eventually end up in Tokyo 3. Yeah. But have them attack other places in the world first. Okay. Um, I never think you explained. Why do they all aim at Lilith? They're not aiming oh. at Lilith. Oh. Remember? They oh, aim at oh, Gendo? Mute, mute oh, oh, they, they're going after the embryonic atom. Okay. Okay. So everyone just thought it was Lilith, but that was not true. Okay. Uh, so I, was yeah. a little, I got that a little mixed up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's my idea of how Neon Genesis Evangelion would interesting, go. Interesting, interesting. Well, the, the, your theme of the world deserves to live and my theme of my life is worth living and by extension the rest of us are pretty parallel. Uh, I just took the more emotional approach to it, especially with the acid trip. I don't even like calling it an acid trip because I personally hate drugs, but essentially, yeah, the, the weird, you know, ex- internal experience and you take it in a much more external experience uh, you focus on the military buildup and the things like that to make the logistics of it work. Yeah, I, I like I like world building. Yeah, now I mean, yeah, there's room for synergy in our views there, and, and I didn't realize you had such a detailed thing planned out there. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna believe this, but I kind of came up with all of that on the fly. <laughs> really? I mean, good job. Yeah, I mean, actually, the, the most, the biggest thing coming up with, um, I liked the ideas of militarization and excommification uh-huh. and. And um, uh, more DACA, and f- humanity is fighting together, and uh, the world has changed because of the apocalypse. Uh, uh, but I needed a reason why all that would happen. Uh, and, and okay, uh, how do I do this? Uh, okay, Adam infected things. And, <laughs> um, okay, it's a threat to the world now, not just to Tokyo. Uh, and... Uh, 
you know what? Gendo takes a trip to like freaking Brazil to look at the newest research project. Do it! And the latest angel attacks Brazil. And like only later does someone put two and two together and go, wait a minute, as soon as Gendo leaves. Like, right at the end, maybe, they'd be figuring it out. Mm-hmm. But at that point, he's already, like, under the spell of Adam, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, and actually, that would make sense. Like, he would, the angel would attack Brazil, and then, like, uh, oh, jeez, being so high-ranked in Nerve, he'd, be, he'd have his fingers in a lot of pies, wouldn't he? Yeah. So he'd be visiting, like, all these different places, and angels would attack those places. And Ava would need to follow him around, practically. You to get the... The logistics worked out how many Avas there are, you know. Because if you want Shinji to be in the veil, involved in most of the battles, he's going to need to walk around with Gendo in his Ava. Hmm. Um, but either way, yeah. Except and, for and, Jersey. It's defended by this fat guy with a robot with a with a Plymouth Barracuda for a head. There you go. Because uh, after all, chicks dig giant robots. Chicks dig giant robots. That is Megas. XLR. You notice I put a large space before I said XLR. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I thought My that was fr- so weird when I first heard it. Like, Mega Sex LR? What? <laughs> dad thought I said, oh, You're watching Mega Sex? <laughs> LR? No, no, there's an LR at the end. What are you talking Megas- about? Extremely large robot. I get it. uh, it's the easiest fan fiction naming system ever. <laughs> okay. Um, I think our throats are dying. <laughs> well, a little how, bit, how but uh, so basically, if you if you thought Ava through and set up the plot in advance, so all the threads would come together, that would be awesome. And that's what I tried to do. And that's what you tried to do. And it's not something that actually happened with the actual show. But halfway through, they started changing stuff, and they were making it up as they, as they went along, um, to their detriment, you know. Now, it didn't stick out to me like Battlestar Galactica. It was like, clearly, like, clearly, you guys, you're making this up as you go along. But, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, it Starbucks alive, and she's like an angel, and, uh, um, all of this happened like 150,000 years ago, and the Colonials well, and Hera are like just, the ancestral the, Hera. The, the whole, the freaking, the Hera thing just did not add up. It took four seasons to be like, nope, that doesn't really make sense. I was like, gosh, freak you guys. But great uh, other aspects of that show. But we're not talking about that show. We're talking about Ava, and here's how we would fix Ava. Ideas fixing here, the themes, bake the themes oh, yeah. into also, everything. How else I would fix Ava? Yeah. Replace Gendo Akari with Commander Adama. <laughs> <laughs> there would be a lot more. Ah. A- okay, we've equipped your a- Ava with a prototype anti anti bastard weapon. Uh, okay. <laughs> This is a flashlight. Now club it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so many angels out the airlock. Yeah, that'd uh, be interesting. And then, yeah, the... <laughs> FDL jumping the... Yeah. FDL jumping the black egg on <laughs> into the orbit, and then it falls on the angel, and they're launching the Avas out the side. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the fanfic nice. writes itself. That'd be nice. It writes itself badly, but it still writes itself. <laughs> yeah, I, um... You know, I, I could I could take the um, the world uniting type of thing as part of the aftermath in my story. I'd still like to end on Shinji's words, but the whole and that you know I don't know do we flash forward or something? But fifty years later, like look how much we've built. The fruit of wisdom has ripened, and therefore, you know we're you know the cure for cancer, and you know we're colonizing Mars and whatever the frick we want to do because we're awesome now and we're at peace and all that. And we deserve to survive. And we deserve to survive because living is worth it. Yeah, it's a pretty good message. Okay. I guess that's about all we have to say there. Thank uh, you for listening. It was quite a long bit. Yeah, that was an hour and a half. Yep. Wow. Yep. I hope uh, you could hear us well enough. Uh, we're going to find out later on. Okay, well, um, on that note, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we're signing off. <laughs>